Excellent. Okay. In today's class, we're going to be doing some foundational concepts. This is a lot of stuff that many of you already know, but if you don't know it, we're going to go over it today in class. This class is what? It's 101. I have it open. Class 101. I get the 101 class, right? We're going to be doing foundational concepts, tokens, playgrounds, prompts, all that good stuff. We're going to be going over the hyperparameters on the side of playgrounds that you see, things like temperature, top P, presence penalty, et cetera. And we'll do a couple of examples too while we're in playground and hopefully we can actually see how moving those sliders changes things for the output for you guys. Um, and that's probably going to be about it for today. We're just going to go over these foundational concepts. And then if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Feel free to also speak up during class if you like. I have a, yeah, I have, I have a Google Slides presentation that goes with this that I actually made for a Rexy prerequisites course, which goes over the exact same thing. So I will be having that on the screen, but there is also a link to it in the notes. Don't feel like you need to take screenshots or anything like that because it will all be there and you can just go straight to the slides presentation and see everything in there too, okay? All right, let's get to it. I will make sure that that window is open. It is, and we will go right there. Okay, oh, let me grab the link for today's class notes and put it into the chat for you guys. Here we go. And there's the chat, here it is, okay. You can also, when you duplicate this, you'll have all of this information as well, which will be great if you have any questions in the future. Okay, so the slides for the class are right at the top of the notes. And we're going to start off with my lovely Google Slides presentation. Oops, slideshow. I wonder if you guys can, can you guys see that whole thing? Or do you just see the the browser window? Let me go and make sure that this is desktop. I think we're good. Okay. Let me know if you can't see anything. Oh, I see lots of thumbs up. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start with what are tokens, right? Because a lot of these LLMs, which is which stands for large language model, and there is a link at the top of the notes to an Amazon Web Services website that actually explains what LLMs are. And I thought the explanation was good enough and simple enough that I could just link to it and let you guys read it because I figure it's knowledge that you're going to want to know at least the basics of, right? A large language model does not understand things as words. What it does is it breaks things into tokens. I don't know why we couldn't have just stuck with words, but tokens it is. And not every word is uh, equal to one token, right? Sometimes words are multiple tokens. So we're going to go over that too in this class. So a token is a basic unit of text that an AI model processes. The AI breaks down text into tokens to understand and generate language, okay? You can think of tokens as Lego blocks that build up phrases and sentences. Each token is a small chunk or piece of language. Some examples of tokens are individual words, punctuation marks, and even whole phrases or numbers. So don't forget that. The punctuation marks are also tokens as well. Everything that is on the page is represented by a token. So if we take a sentence like, say, I should say, a paragraph. <laughs> like the quick brown fox jumped over the extremely lazy dog. We were all surprised at just how agile the fox was. Maybe we shouldn't have been, but many of us couldn't believe our eyes. We can bring this into the tokenizer and see what the AI system would break that system. It's tokens and the tokens don't always match up perfectly with words. So let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to show you guys how we can play with things in the tokenizer. I'm going to copy that text. Open AI tokenizer. And I will give you this link too. Let me put that in the chat. You can go ahead and play around. I would imagine that this is going, this tokenizer is going to stick around for a while, but don't be surprised if they get rid of it at some point. I think it's really only there for demonstration models and whatnot. 
The meat paste in the text. The quick brown fox jumped over the extremely lazy dog. We were all surprised at just how agile the fox was. Maybe we shouldn't have been, but many of us can believe our eyes. So as you can see here, each one of these words in this first sentence are a token. The colors are showing you where a token begins and ends, right? But there are some words here, like the word shouldn't, which are actually two tokens. It's shouldn't, and then the apostrophe T is another token. And the same with couldn't, right? Now, it doesn't always line up so perfectly like this. There, if you're using a lot of compound words in your sentences, you're probably going to get even more, more tokens. So this text here was about, let's see, it is 34 words, but it is 39 tokens. We've done a little bit of math on the back end, and we've figured out that um, usually your word count is about 75% of the total of the amount of tokens. So let's say you have a word count in your chapter. I'm going to do some math with a calculator here, guys. <laughs> Let's say your, your word count for a chapter is about 2,000 words, and that is only 75% of what the total will be. So do a little cross multiply and divide. Like 2,000 is over 75 times 100 divided by 75. Okay, so you're looking at possibility of it being around 2,600 tokens. So going from like 2,000 token, 2,000 words, to around 2,600 tokens, that's something to keep in mind because remember that we are going to be paying by the token when we're doing, when we're doing our prompting. You pay both for the prompt that you input and the prompt and the response that you get back. So understanding that tokens are a, a slice, a section of the words that you are inputting is important enough to know because you will be paying for the amount of tokens that you put in and that you take out, okay? All right, I think that's a pretty easy foundational concept to understand. Let's say, let's go back to my slideshow. Here we are, okay. So the number of tokens in a text has a direct impact on several aspects of AI-generated content. The model's performance, uh, language models like ChatGPT have a maximum token limit. So some of these token limits are small. They're like 4,000 tokens, 4,096. Some of these language models have very large token limits, 32,000, 100,000, 200,000. Right, knowing if you're going to be working with a very small model that can only take about four thousand tokens at a time, you're probably going to have to keep your prompts, any text that you put in, and probably around three thousand words or less. Right. One of the things that we talk about all the time is the context window, which is their maximum token limit, but they keep in memory. All right. So if text exceeds the limit, it must be truncated or shortened, potentially affecting the quality in the context of the generated output. So you got to watch out for this. Um, a good sign that you've run out of your context windows, AI forgets parts of your story or data, okay? Output quality, longer texts with more tokens may result in incomplete or less coherent responses from the AI models. As it must generate output with its token, within its token limit, you have to consider that. So keep your prompts tight and focused. Uh, pricing, many AI services, including ChatGPT and Claude, base their pricing on the number of tokens used. You may also be charged differently for prop tokens and completion tokens. Uh, I know that this is true for Claude. Um, it is not true for every model, but it is true for Claude. What you prompt, what you prompt is more expensive. I think the completion tokens are more expensive, actually, what you get back. I would have to double check on that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, understanding token usage can help you optimize costs and manage your budget effectively. So um, you will probably realize after working with these models for a little while that like GBT4 is super expensive compared to some of these other smaller models that are super cheap or almost even free. Something to keep in mind, okay? Make the most of your area generated content. Consider these tips for working with tokens. Keep your input concise and be mindful of token count. Pretty easy, right? We do have a cheat sheet that is in Teachable, I will also link to that too because I've forgotten about it and it is there. 
it helps you understand how big some of these LLM models are, how many tokens they can take, and how much they generally output. Are there any questions on tokens before I move on to playgrounds? Does anybody have any questions? That's all right. It gives me a moment to sip my tea. <laughs> <laughs>